Hello and good morning. This is Tina Bradford. I will be your hostess for today's call. Now, what I'm going to let you know is if you have questions, if you need me to slow down, I cannot read your body language. I need you to post it in the chat comments. Many times I get going and for some people I'm too fast. For other people, they are right along the lines, but unless you communicate with me, I do not know where you stand. So please, in that chat box, drop in any questions you have, if you need me to slow down, any comments whatsoever. I will not take any offense to it. I need you to communicate with me. So I am going to start by talking about the basics of Mortgage Coach. Basics of Mortgage Coach is based on templates. So if you do not have templates established in there, fee templates, either your own fee templates or fee templates at the branch level, if um, one or the other, then it's going to be harder to build out Mortgage Coach. Second one is product templates. Same thing with product templates. If you do not have them built out, it will take you more time to build a mortgage coach presentation because it is based on using these templates. Down in that chat box, I am posting a playlist. This playlist does have a very broke down sections in there. And I'm gonna open it up for you. And in this playlist, if you don't have templates, fee templates and product templates are placed right in there. You can see they are short videos. So you can start and stop them as you need. So you don't have to go through and watch it nonstop and try to keep up with the video, but make sure you do spend time building these out because it's gonna speed up your process. The other one is strategy templates. Strategy templates is another type of template and basically it's multiple product templates whoops didn't mean to do that it's multiple product templates that you normally compare if you're always doing um points versus no points having that strategy template in place is going to help you out if you're always doing fha versus conventional again that strategy template is going to help you out but if you build your templates by going your fee templates, then your product templates, then your strategy templates. Strategy templates are very easy to do. You're just dropping in those product templates when you build it. It is the things that do not change from loan scenario to loan scenario. So once you have these in place, Mortgage Coach 5-Minute TCA should be no problem for you. So any questions on those templates? And I'm not gonna get into building the templates simply because we have a, a limited amount of time. So I'm gonna go right into Mortgage Coach and I am gonna build from scratch. So starting with that new client. Now I will make comments on what is required and what is not required for you to fill in. In many cases, you can skip a lot of these fields over here when you're building, but you just need to know which ones you have to go into. So client will be where it pops up. Now on that client, we'll give that client a name. I wanna use Mark as my example. I would put in the co-borrower's name in here as well, as well as a phone number. Reason why I'm placing that phone number in there is every time that my client looks at the presentation, I'm gonna get an email alert. And that email alert is gonna say, hey, client looked at the presentation for 47 minutes on February 25th. Here is their phone number. If I'm opening it up on my cell phone and looking at it on my cell phone, I can just touch that phone number, it's a hot link. I don't have to go back and look up Mark's phone number. I simply can just touch it from that point and move forward. So it's a time-saving factor. Next section, client versus prospect. If you do work pipelines different, you can separate it. This is a search engine criteria. That's the only thing it is. 
So if you don't work your pipelines different or if you don't feel that you're gonna need to ever do a search and separate them, don't change it. Don't spend that time clicking the button. Rent versus own, if I was to place it on yes, the only difference is it's going to open up in the assumption area rental information. So I'm gonna place in the current rent, the rent increase, which you can typically look up the county name, Google it, county name, annual rental increase, and you'll get a percentage there. The monthly rental insurance, this is gonna be replaced by your HOA. So make sure that you are placing it in there because it is a cost of renting. And the last one, other monthly rental expenses. This is going to be if your client is paying for a pet deposit, a garage, carport, washer dryer, any expense that they currently have that will go away once they buy. So we wanna make sure that those expenses are covered because it is a cost of renting. Going back to my client, I'm gonna switch it back over to no on rent versus own. Referred by and partner email. If you are using a, or have a realtor or other partner on the transaction, you can place them in there. Their number one complaint is that we don't communicate enough. So this is going to allow for that extra communication because what they're going to receive is every time that client looks at the presentation, they're gonna get that email alert as well. Now your job as the loan officer is to simply go in there and say, hey, you know what? This is not anything for you to do. I just wanna keep you in the loop. So it's passive communication to keep you in the loop. Don't worry about doing anything when you see it, but just know that we're working together. Finally, last name, presentation name. This is going to allow you to be able to separate your clients when you go into the client, into the search engine. So my goal is to actually capture the five to seven homes that the average human being buys in their lifetime, or I should say average American buys in their lifetime, five to seven homes at this point. So I wanna capture all five to seven homes. So by naming the presentation name, I can then be able to use that folder in my search engine and tuck everything under one name and be able to know presentation by presentation by this presentation name. Any questions on this client page? And it's a small enough group as well. If you do have a question, you can raise your hand and I can unmute you if you know that you have sound. Next page, contact information. Now you'll notice there is no save button in Mortgage Coach. It automatically saves for you. So you don't have to worry about clicking save. Once you click on that next or you click on that next um, page, it will automatically save. There is nothing in here required to be filled in. So on the marketing side, however, this is the only one that shows up on the presentation. So in here, marketing, I like placing your new home. Nothing feels better for a client than to see that this is the next step. This is not a probability, but this is the next step. So by placing in that your new home, I'm just doing a mindset change. That's all I have on this page really to talk about. But again, you can leave it blank or you can place in the actual property address. On this section, goals, make sure you are choosing a goal. Honestly, I use two goals on this page. I use my purchase a new home goal and any transaction that I have a current loan scenario, I use other. The reason I like using other is because I like to manually change my numbers versus having my system change things for me. So it does change up some of the fields in the other pages. So make sure that you do have purchase a new goal. If you're purchase driven, nine times out of 10, this is what you're doing, unless you're doing a move up analysis scenario, or maybe you're showing, should they refinance or buy a new property or should they rent versus selling this property. So unless you have another scenario of that type, purchase a new home is going to be what you're choosing here. Now, if you do use the pay off my debts, 
this debt, if I was to put 30,000 in there, and then I show the current payoff amount on my assumption area, this 30,000 is automatically going to be added to that payoff amount to give you a new amount for that new loan. So do remember, this will automatically add it in there for you. I'm gonna delete that out, and we're just gonna do the purchase a new home. This page here, the assumptions, the only thing required is this little red icon. That asterisk is saying this is a required fill. I'm gonna place in, let's say 275,000. Even if I'm doing a refinance scenario, this is that only one section I fill in. Everything else will be on that next page when I click next and it asks or collects current um, information about the current loan scenario. So it would ask me when the first date was, what that original loan amount was, interest rate, term, and then hazard, property tax. If there was MI, you could add that in there as well. But it's gonna give me a payoff amount on that refinance scenario. But with the purchase, all I'm adding is that current property value right here in that required field. Affordability, nothing is required here or in that second page of affordability expenditure. You can skip this section. So if I went to my assumptions, I could place this amount in there and I could click right on my product one. But because I wanna go in there and actually um, just show you some other information, I'm gonna just simply place in the amount to show for DTI. And again, this is not gonna show up on the presentation, but where it will show up is there's a little box on the left-hand side of your product as you're building that you will be able to see this information. So this is for DTI. This, I rarely ever, ever use. Um, even talking to loan officers that are working out in the field every day, I've only heard a couple of scenarios where they do use it. So the, this is going to be if you need to see the reserves. Do they have enough reserves? You can throw it in there. But remember, any money not used here is automatically pushed over and considered um, an asset after the close. But we know reality is most people go, but they buy the new car, they buy new furniture, they go on a vacation after they bought that house, and they don't have that leftover cash anymore. So again, I rarely ever use this. Tax information. Again, because of the new home or the new um, standard tax deductions, the tax benefit of buying a home isn't relevant to the mass majority. Only a few handful of people or locations is this going to be relevant. For example, I'm in Southern California. Here in the city I'm at, the average condo is 450,000. So the average single person buying a condo is gonna see a tax benefit. But a married couple is not gonna see a tax benefit simply because it's not gonna reach the same level as that standard deduction of 24,000. So you really wanna look and play it off. Where is it gonna reach for a couple? around 525,000 based on that interest rate might go up and down a little bit, but that's going to be that point where it is going to be a benefit. But again, majority of the time, not gonna be a benefit. Also, a lot of loan officer, com the companies are like, don't talk about taxes. So if that's where you're at, skip this section, don't fill it in. Nine times out of 10, unless a client's asking for it, I'm gonna skip it. This page is simply a data collection page for you to remember information. Again, skipping this information, it's not gonna do anything in the presentation. Now to my first product. Let's go with a 30 year fixed. Actually, we're gonna do 20% down versus 10% down. So I'm gonna place a product name. I want my clients to be able to identify what product I'm using, or I could even go into strategy one versus strategy two if I don't wanna be focused on product names. So maybe a client is like, oh my God, I am afraid of ARM loans, but you know that ARM loan is gonna be their best choice based on their financial goals, but they're afraid of it put strategy one, strategy two, strategy three, versus actually naming the product. 
I'm gonna put 20% down and I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add it from my product template. Again, having those product templates in are going to make it faster for you because it's gonna have all of my closing details in it that stay stagnant. So my closing cost, prepaid days of interest, hazard insurance, property tax, and reserve months, plus it's gonna have my down payment amount and my term. So what am I adding to this loan? I'm adding the interest rate. I can still change or manipulate anything else in there. If I have the actual hazard insurance, I could put the actual hazard insurance. If there's something in my closing cost details that I haven't, don't have in there, I can go in there and drop that amount in there. But I'm gonna place in my interest rate and I'm gonna go through each page just so you can see. Here's where my closing cost is. So I'm actually gonna drop in that one didn't have a closing cost. So your closing cost, you would then, with your template, have this information in there. Many of the closing cost templates do not have a lender's title insurance or a owner's title insurance in there. If that's the case, you would come in and you would add those either as a dollar amount or a percentage. And once you're happy with it, this one would not have pest inspection, I would simply apply it to the loan. Points, I can either place points in here or I can place a negative amount if I'm doing a lender credit. The other place I could place a lender credit or a seller credit is in here if I add a fee. There is a fee called contribution. I type the letter C and then I scroll down to get to contribution. So here I can add that contribution and who is paying it. So I could do both a lender contribution here and then I can add another contribution field if I wanna show them side by side in here. And then I can add the seller contribution. So if they're paying points, maybe it's a um, seller buy down scenario. I would add my seller contribution here. Then on the point side, I would add that one points over on my point screen. The other field I like adding in here, just so you know that it's in here, is down payment assistance. There is a field called down payment assistance. And once you go into down payment assistance, you have the choice of placing it on one of these and you just put the percent of the down payment assistance in there. Any questions or anything relevant to fees on just those closing cost fees that you are concerned about or you maybe worked with and were a little confused about. Looks like we're good. Again, if you don't communicate with me, I won't know the questions that you have. Prepaid days of interest. I have 15 in all of mine. Now remember when you're building out your product templates, keep them standardized. The standardization allows you to be able to know which fields, how much are in your field. So the more you use Mortgage Coach, you'll automatically know what's in there. And that way you will automatically know if you need to adjust or change that field. If I did have more earnest money, I could place that earnest money and it's gonna give me the true cash to close. Now I'm gonna go into my monthlies, and again, because I use that product template, it dropped me in factors automatically. So I have all of those factors in there as well as my reserve months. You can see I collected four months, 14 months here. I collected two months here, plus my 12 annual premium. So now I'm ready for my second product. Your add another product is at the end of the last product you built. So clicking on the add another product. This one's gonna be 10% down. Fastest way to build your second product nine times out of 10 is to be copy from the first product you built. What is that gonna copy? It's gonna make two identical loan scenarios. So all my closing costs, my hazard insurance, property tax, prepaid days of interest, everything is already going to be in the second loan scenario. So I only need to change those factors that need changed. So 10% down, I'm gonna say it's the same interest rate. And then I'm going to go to my monthly cost. 
I'm skipping this page over to my monthly cost, adding in my small mortgage insurance if it's applicable. I know many times in today's market, MI, they're not even pulling it in on that 10% down for some companies. So if it's applicable, I would add that in there. Is there any other loan scenario you would like to see built? So if you, there's a product you use all the time, you want to see it built, Lewis, I'm going to allow you, you can unmute yourself. 5% uh, down, because I do a lot of uh, first time home buyers and you know, they have the 97%, so you can do either 3% or 5%. I just want to throw a 5% in there. Okay, let's add that product. I had one more question also, as far as the templates go, um, as far as pricing templates, uh, can you, or fee templates, can you export those from Encompass or do you have to input them by hand? You have to place them in there, but being an enterprise company, um, we, you do have the ability to have them built at the branch level. And if you want us to build it, simply send me an email, tnetmortgagecoach.com, and I will send you a fee worksheet that you can fill in your fees and we'll build them out for the whole branch. Oh, I think we have, we have, the, temp, we have the templates in our, uh, in our encompass, I was just wondering if I could just if I if I could just like yeah. input them over, but they have to just be input. They have to be manually inputted either on the branch side or the individual side. Okay, thank you. So even if you in, um, exported them into a PDF file and then uh -huh. sent them to us, we could use that PDF file. Oh, and then put them in for me. Yep. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Yeah. So the five percent down, I'm going to use the product the most similar. That's that ten percent down. So I'm simply going to copy it, and I'm only going to change those factors that change. 5%. Interest rate would probably go up a little bit on this one. And then, again, my mortgage insurance factor, whoops, I put it really high on that last one, would probably be adjusted as well. So I'm going to go back over here, and you'll see how easy it is to change. Using that carrot, I can go right straight to that page to make that change for that other one. So any other products that you want to see built? Remember, this is basic mortgage information. It's just you as the loan officer figuring out where it's located. And that's going to take practice and in going into it. So as long as you're taking some time going in there and practicing, you're going to learn it. It's standardized, it doesn't change every time. Once you learn Mortgage Coach, you get, get it. Raise your hand, anyone. The only other one that I would consider building here is an 80-10-10. If anyone does use that 80-10-10 product or an 85-15, raise your hand and I will build that as well. Okay, let's build that one out as well. So again, adding another product. And this one's gonna be just a simple 80-10-10 just because the math is easy. So on this one, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to copy that 20% down. And the reason why is when I show an 80-10-10 or even an 80-15-5, I'm gonna show the CLTV here. I want the full amount, the 20%. You can see here right now I have 80%. This is gonna be your check-in point where you can tell, did I do it right or did I not? I'm going to go in, adjust anything I would need to change. Moving to that next screen, of course I wouldn't change anything here and probably not here as well. But what I would do is, does this product have a second lien? Yes, it does. Now when I go to that next page, I will add the information on that second lien. 27,500, whatever that interest rate is. The term, I'm gonna say mine is a 240 month, and I'm gonna say the first 120 months is interest only. So placing that information in there, once I click next, now you can see 90%. That's how I can verify, yes, I got it right. I have that real LTV over here on that right-hand side. 
Last thing is, if there are APR related costs, you can throw them in here and that way they're connected. Now, at this point, what I personally like doing is I like capturing the information in this little box. And the reason why is I'm gonna stick this in my email. This is my clickbait for my client. Quick view of what's going on with the loan, the CLTV, if there was points being paid, any amount of their prepaids, the cash to close, as well as their DTI, the top end and the back end. So you can see I have four products. That is the maximum amount. So I would not be able to build a fifth product on here. But if I go to my next screen, let's say they do wanna see other options. There is a copy analysis button right here where I could copy this analysis and build out any other scenario. So maybe they're like, ah, interest rate's a little higher than what I wanted, but I can copy this one and I can add points to each one of those products and lower that interest rate on each one. And then I can give them that next page. So it would be two TCA links that I would be providing to my client, but that copy analysis button is right there for you. This page is all about your client's hopes and dreams. So what is it that your client is looking for? When you do that interview, you might have some new questions that you're not asking your client. And the basis is to set it up for your clients to reach their financial goals. So you know what, are there any large or financial impacts that you might have in the next five, 10 years that's going to need possibly money that you need to leverage from your equity that we may need to take into consideration? Maybe they have kids graduating from school in five years, but they want to retire in eight years. I can simply add that to my analysis, and then it's going to reflect over here that scenario for them based on what they're looking for. If for some reason I haven't asked those questions, I like leaving this on 60 and 10 if I have that scenario, simply because 65 years is always a great check-in point. 10 matches the seven. So everyone used to be selling in approximately seven years. It's moved to 10 years. 4% property appreciation. Again, Google it. Google knows more than I do. When you do this, make sure that you are um, adding on there. And it's funny, my phone picked up. I said the G word. So when you do this, don't throw it out there. So I'm in an area the property appreciation is 9% for last year. I'm not gonna put 9% in here because odds are my area is not going to maintain that 9% 10 years down the line. So I like placing in the average of 4% if it's way above that 4%. Now, if it's below, put that lower number. Benchmarks, I never touch these. So quick and easy. If you do, all it's gonna do is it's gonna change the graph over here to reflect different information, but it places red on here. So unless I have a client, maybe they've gone to um, another, they've gone to Rocket Mortgage and Rocket Mortgage gave them a presentation and I wanna compare my loan to Rocket Mortgage, but I want them to see Rocket Mortgage, it doesn't have the best offer. I can then change it so the benchmark is my loan and see the savings or the cost of that other loan option as compared to my loan. Last thing is long-term chart information. I can change it here to show what I, I need based on my scenario. So I'm gonna throw in that net worth. That way my client can see how is this going to impact them in that time frame that they are either retiring, buying up, buying down, whatever that scenario is. So they have a true vision of how much money are they going to have to apply towards whatever that goal is. Clicking on that next button, this is the presentation page. This page is important because there's a few different things you can do on here. First off, I cannot delete a product, but I can turn it off so it does not show up in the presentation. Simply by unchecking the box, it's going to make it so it doesn't show up in that presentation. Other thing, I'm often asked amortization schedule. It's right here. You can choose from that drop down if you want to show that amortization schedule. If you are in an area or if you do leverage that seller buy down, there's a quick way to build that seller buy down in here as well. 
These next few ones, again, never go into them unless I wanna change the verbiage, the little notes in that section. Then I could click into it, either add to it or highlight and type over it. Otherwise, I'm gonna go straight to preview. Any questions that you have up to this point? Looks like we're all good. Notify me when the report is viewed. Remember that notification I talked about at the very beginning that says how long the client looked at it. You want this little box checked so you get those notifications. This is gonna give you some input on how interested is my client. So if you see the clients looked at that for five minutes, might not be enough time to digest everything in a total cost analysis. But if they looked at it 47 minutes or if you see them keep jumping into the presentation, might be a good time to pick up that phone and call them. And you don't have to tell them, you know that they looked at the presentation. You can just say, hey, wanted to check in with you, see if you had any other questions. You know, I know it's been a week since we've talked or whatever the case is, but it does give you that little insider information that you won't have otherwise. Quote date, little carrot over on the right opens up that calendar, add that because it does protect you. And then I'm gonna click on that generate shared link. This is your hot link. This is the link that you are going to send to the client. So at this point, I copy that link. Then I click on my add audio video where I have that choice. Do I want to add the video in my mobile? If I have the Mortgage Coach app on my phone and I click on there, it's gonna give me an alert on my phone that says, hey, want to record a video on Mortgage Coach? You just click on there and it takes it right into selfie mode with a little red start and stop button. I'm gonna click on in web browser. That will bring up my camera. And again, little red button. When I click on this, either in the mobile or on here, there is a timer. That timer is set there in order for you to be able to tell how long you're talking. So there's two different ways. There's those loan officers that go through every product at this point, and they're that one touch loan officer. And if you can do that, that's great. Studies do show it takes clients five to seven times to see your name, hear your name, associate you with the product before they buy in. So this is that opportunity for you to give them that extra touch by being able to go in there to do the presentation. Now I'm gonna click stop and throw that one away and start over. So if I was doing this for Mark, and I'm gonna scroll up, I would start it. Hey Mark, I'm so excited you decided to move forward. So what I am showing you are those options we talked about. So we really wanna know what's gonna be in your best interest, either placing that 20% down, or we can even go in a little deeper than what I'm showing here and show those investments and depositing that extra 10% into an investment account to show that rate of return because right now we have lower interest rates and we can yield a little bit more if you are investing it. So I want you to look at the highlighted areas I've highlighted in each of the sections, as well as click into the more information in the upper right-hand corner of each section. You're gonna find out I've highlighted those things that are gonna help you and your family make a better decision. You're probably gonna have questions, which is great, that's why I'm here. So either while you're in the presentation, give me a call, or if I don't hear back from you tonight by 7 p.m., I'm gonna call you. If you already have plans, that's fine. Just text me or call me. Let me know a better time to reach out to you. I'm so excited to move forward. So once I've done that, I'm gonna click here and click on that upload. Now it is only capturing what was in that box. It does not capture the whole screen. So now I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna do my highlights. Is my client more payment driven or more cash to close driven? Based on whichever one it is, I'm going to highlight it. Highlight is simply clicking the mouse. I can click it on the row, I can click it on the column, or I can click it on individual cells. You can see all the basic information in here. These are your TILA RESPA requirements. So how much money goes towards that loan interest over the life of the loan and how much of that money is the actual unrecoverable cost in that first five years. Your freedom point is down here, that's simply just your term. 
And um, payment stream is down here. So you can see if there is a payment stream, um, your 5% conventionals, your FHAs, you'll be able to see what is that highest payment amount that they are going to have. Sorry, thought I was gonna sneeze. So then the more information button up here. Here is where I'm gonna go in there. If there is mortgage insurance, I'm gonna highlight that mortgage insurance that they'll be paying. Everything else in here is basic information. Closing cost is initially book, but I can go into that fee details to see where's that money actually going and who is paying what. It's down here at that very bottom. Each of those are broken to different sections. And then the reinvestment strategy is added in here as well. So we are gonna go a little bit into that reinvestment. Our monthly payment difference. Most expensive on this one as well as this one is the zero. It is showing the savings. So they would save $128 a month if they went with this 80-10-10 versus the 5% down. They would save almost 300 a month if they went with that 20% down versus that 5% down. This one's basic summary area, nothing new is in here. Savings over 60 months. This is probably the one spot that gives most loan officers the most trouble, but it's really easy. It's simply, we're comparing unrecoverable cost. So we have that 5% down, again, most expensive. 14,500 savings over here. If I go into the more information, I'm simply adding interest in MI plus closing cost. So most of the time, what it really is, is just the difference in the interest that they're paying on the loan or interest in MI if it's an MI scenario. Finally, last window, net worth in 10 years, I'm showing those net worth windows. So this does take into consideration my property appreciation, which I use 4%. In here, I might highlight that loan balance because that's gonna be the balance at the end of that time frame that my clients need. Maybe the net worth. And then I'm going to send it to my client. At this point, I'm going to open up an email and give me one moment to get that up on my screen. So I would then open up my email. Now here's a little Tina secret that most people don't know. In your signature line, there is no limitation on how big or how small you make that signature. I like putting whole emails in the signature line. So I can go in and drop everything in there for you. So once you drop in that signature, I like again using that little screen capture that I took and this is just gonna be my clickbait, and I'm actually trying to find it on my back screen. Give me one minute. There we go. I'm gonna drag it over here. Now it's in my presentation. And underneath it, that's where I like to put, I prepared your final analysis for you to review, and I'm going to simply hyperlink right here, my link, my TCA link into there, if you don't know how to hyperlink, what you'll be doing is um, you're, you wanna get to the little menu and it's your control button normally. And on that menu, you highlight the section you wanna hyperlink it to. Then once you click on that button with the hyperlink, you'll have an address it'll ask for and you just drop in the link of the presentation. Now when your client clicks on it, it will take them right to that presentation and I always customize that first paragraph. Thank you for your time on the phone. I hope Bobby's game was great or whatever the case is. And then add the client's name, subject line. Um, here, I like using the client's name. So um, so-and-so family's total cost analysis or so-and-so's family's loan options, however you wanna word it. I like using their name because then they know it's been customized for them. Again, just something to encourage them to click on that email versus overlooking it and not clicking. Let's go back to that total cost analysis. I did click on that link and this is what your clients will see when they go in there. They have to click on the accept disclosure. Hey Mark, I'm so 
it brings up that presentation where you are doing your video automatically. And that button's not working for me. And then it takes them into the presentation. So any questions up to this point? We have two more sections to cover. We're gonna do MC Live, and then I am gonna show a little bit about that reinvestment strategy for anyone who might use it, they can stay on and watch that as well. So MC Live, what is it? It is my ability for me to drive my client's window. I'm gonna go up here, and I am actually going to switch the view to my side-by-side -side view. And now if I go in here, first thing I'm gonna do is when my client clicks in it and they say, okay, I'm in the presentation, I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to clear out my presentation highlights. My client screen will mirror what I do. And I'm gonna say, hey, I just cleared out all of the highlights. Let me know when you see it on your screen. And I do this because it's based on the internet speed. If you're in an area where people might have some slower internet, it might take five seconds for it to clear on their screen. But mentally for you, you're able to capture that time so you know how fast or slow you need to talk. Now you'll know when they're in that presentation because in that upper right hand corner, it tells you that there's a viewer. There is no limit to how many people can be in the presentation at the same time. So you could have the husband and the wife at different locations. They could then give the link to the realtor. They can give the link to Uncle Joe who knows more about the loan than you do. So you'll be able to have all those people in there at the same time. Now I can go in and I can start talking about it. So I know you are a bit concerned about that cash to close, and you do have enough for that 20%, but what we're really looking at is which way is gonna be the best investment for you. Either putting that whole 20% down, or saving 10%, leaving it where it's at, or maybe reinvesting it in one of these two options. So we're gonna go ahead and look at those options as well. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna highlight on their screen. I can go into that more information button and it's going to pop up onto their screen. So you can see how it is happening live back and forth between the two windows. Now let's go into any questions on that live. And what I suggest is practice it with a friend. Send a friend a link and just practice going through it with them so you can see how it works or a coworker in the office. And that way you can see how it works the first time. So mentally you're ready for your game when you do have a client on the line. Okay, we're gonna go into that reinvestment strategy. I'm gonna click back over here. That reinvestment strategy is in that analysis window. So when I click in here, there's a few things that it tells me. First off, it tells me how much money I am saving each month based on the scenario selection. So that 5% is the most expensive. I'm not saving any money here. I save $128 a month here and $298 a month here. Because I'm working on that reinvestment strategy, I'm actually going to come down here to the bottom and I'm gonna say in every scenario, my rate of return is 6.6. .6. I'm just picking a random number. So I put that 6.6 .6 in every window. Now, on this 20% down, I'm going to place that 298.81 payment down here to show it being paid. That's going to show a monthly payment because it's in that investment payment window every single month, and they're going to have $50,000 at the end of that 10 years. 10% down. They're gonna have 10% left over, which is 275 or 27,500. And they're gonna have an extra $128 a month that they're saving, so 128.47. Whoops, 128.47. So, at the end of that time frame, they're gonna have $74,000 in liquid accounts versus the 50,000. On this third option, the only savings they're gonna have is that 15%, because this is a 5% down. 
And that would be, I don't know, let me really quick run my calculator. So give me a minute, or if someone's really good at math, you can drop it in there for me. Forty-one to two fifty. So I'm going to just start on that starting balance. Forty-one to fifty. Now there is no savings on this one. It's zero. So I'm not going to put a monthly payment in there. And the last one, the eighty ten ten. They are going to save one twenty-eight eighty-seven a month. So I'm only going to put that monthly payment in there. So any questions on what I've just done? I'm actually showing that reinvestment. Now, if you do want to customize this, let's say you want to make a one payment in month 27. When you click on this, that little pencil comes up. You can click into it. You can go to the month you want to make that bulk payment. And I'm going to say they're making $5,000 payment. But if I turn it on for a bulk payment, I need to add a zero line after it to turn it back off. Otherwise, the assumption is from month 27 on, they're making $5,000 monthly extra principal payments. So if you turn it on, you need to turn it off. And then when you click on save, you will see that the actual term will go down here in this freedom point. So you can customize it as well, but remember, once you turn on, if you're customizing it, you can turn it back off. I do have people all the time ask me, what if they wanna make one extra payment a year? You could go in there and do month 12, month 24, month 36, adding it and then adding a zero line on each. The easiest way to do that is to take that payment here, divide it by 12 and just put it as a monthly payment. It's not gonna be exactly the same, but because we don't know what month they're making that payment, if it's the beginning of the year or the end of the year, it's gonna give them a good average. So now that this information is in here, all I need to do is click off, and you see the little yellow section, section here, but you also see it automatically updated my presentation. Now in my more information, I have the information down here in my reinvestment section that I can highlight in order to bring it out so the client can really see what it is we're doing in this section. When I talk to the client down here, I'm gonna talk about what's the most valuable to them. They are saving money, and you can see this has all gone to zero. If you don't want it to go to zero, which I don't like, there is an exclude reinvestment payment right here. That's gonna bring those back. I like showing those savings up here still. And I might have to refresh this window. Hey Mark, I'm so excited you decided so I like showing those savings still. So when I show them the actual presentation, I can show them side by side what's going to be their best interest. So they are saving $298 a month here, 14,000, but they're not building quite as much net worth. So here they are paying more money um, as compared to the 20% down in interest. They don't have quite as much savings but they are building a little bit more liquid cash. So it really comes down to what is the most important thing for your client? To have that liquid cash on hand or to have the actual savings and interest? Any questions? And I know that was a lot, but this is being recorded. If you do want a copy of the recording of this video, you can email me, tina at mortgagecoach.com, and I will get you a copy. I'll email it as soon as I get it uploaded into um, YouTube. I'll give you a copy. So we have about 10 minutes left. 
If you have any questions in general, please, um, this is the time to ask. This is your time. So if you don't ask the questions, again, I don't know what questions you would have. I know a lot of times what happens here is you're feeling a little overwhelmed. Remember, go to that initial one here, and I'm going to post it again just in case anyone jumped in after the fact so they have it. Go in here and start at the beginning. Start by building out, and if you want us to build your fee templates, send me a, an email saying, Tina, can you build branch templates for us? You already have those branch templates in place. Skip this one, go right to your product templates. Build out your product templates. Strategy templates are gonna be even faster because it's those scenarios you show every single day is what you want those strategy templates. So you also have how to create a strategy template and you may you know already have strategy templates in your mortgage coach because they will be under another tab. So if you do have those strategy templates, all you have to do is update those closing costs by going into there and in each product, drop in your product template. So last call for any questions or anything else that you need. Chat button down here, if you are working along, and I'm not by your side, use that chat button. If it says chat, response time is less than a minute. If it says contact us, that will be an email sent over to my support team and they'll be able to get back to you. It's also a help button up here at the top. That sends you to a research where it's a keyword. So if I type in refi, it's gonna give me some choices for running refi. Any of these I use, I want it to say Advice Engine. That's our new technology. The one without Advice Engine is our old legacy version. So you want the one to say Advice Engine so it matches the screens that you have in your current system. Also in here, if you go into a client, let me go back to my clients. On the right-hand side, if you don't see it open already, there's a little pencil. Down here is a calendar. If you are a hands-on learning and you need to be able to talk it through, Thursday Q&A call, 100% recommend this call. If you get to that point where you're like, hey, Tina, I get mortgage coach, but I'm trying to build out this strategy or my closing costs aren't matching and you want that hands-on, I can even jump into your account during this call and jump into that Q&A call. Um, you guys are the first one to hear this, but our Wednesday call that was a mobile call, this is actually going to be turned into a strategy call. So every month we'll have a different strategy that we're focusing on. Um, in March, the fourth will be still be the mobile call, but these three will all be on the refinance scenario. So if you do want to learn that refinance scenario, um, go into these, and that's gonna be the refinance scenario uh, highly suggest jumping into those strategy calls after you've learned Mortgage Coach because that's where you're going to become that black belt loan officer and really start educating your clients is by understanding the strategy and how to present that strategy to your clients. So looks like everyone is good. Thank you for attending. Again, don't forget to email me with anything you need, tina at mortgagecoach.com. And I am here to help you out. So have a fabulous week and good luck with Mortgage Coach.